Hello, air signs. Aquarius. Oh, um, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Okay, look, I'm just going to dive right into this. See, I'm, I'm still just trying to sit here and collect, um, collect myself and collect my thoughts here. I'm in your energy, air signs. I'm in the energy of the air signs. And what I want to say right now is Aquarius is coming through so fucking hard. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to start there, all right? So l let that sink in. Um, and I want to say prepare yourselves. I'm not going to say this is a bad, going to be a bad reading, but there may be some tough messages that come through here already. I'm picking up on that. But welcome in, Air Signs. Uh, this is your post-January 2023 review. Now, like I said in the rest of the signs, this reading is going to be a little more time time sensitive it is speaking to a very specific moment in time for all of us okay or for you we'll say so keep that in mind now this could still resonate for you or the understanding of this could still hit you at any time so even if you find yourself watching this months and months and months and months later after this has been initially published on youtube and you're just now getting it or hearing the message, that's fine. <laughs> okay, it's still, it's still a thing. Um, we're gonna get a collective view. We're gonna get the collective message here and then we're gonna break it down between all three of the signs. So I highly, highly recommend that you at least watch the collective part of the message if you don't watch it first, okay? Because ultimately that is really where we're deriving the deeper bro uh separated messages for each of the signs okay this is where we're starting so you might as well just watch this first <laughs> okay all right uh anything else yes like share comment subscribe welcome if you're new my name is eric if we haven't met before welcome to divine conversations um check out patreon patreon.com slash divine conversations all my patreoners i'm gonna get back to patreon i i promise but i want to finish these collective messages first and then we'll shimmy back in yes all right anything else <sighs> okay the future is looking bright and Aquarius definitely is the star that bright star that is leading us to that future right now now just like the fire sign reading with Aries and the earth sign reading with Capricorn and also you Aquarius. Now Aquarius is coming through the strongest for the collective here in the air signs. Now collectively speaking and I should I very I really should make a post about this um, in the community section because now that I have gotten through or ultimately I'm about to get through but I'm on the last step now so now for, in hindsight I see that this is more the, the me a lot of the messages that came through in this session here guys this Jan post January 2023 review many of these messages can apply collectively so at this point what I want to say is I highly highly recommend from a collective point of view that you watch at least the Aries reading of the fire signs if not Aries and the collective um, the Capricorn reading of the earth signs again if not Capricorn and collective and then subsequently I'm gonna say at this point Aquarius as well okay but then of course do your own personal research but if you're looking for collective big collective understanding perspective type energy Aries Capricorn and Aquarius okay Aries because a lot of what we're talking about here has is heavily involved with Mars retrograde what it is you experienced there what cycles were kicked off what cycles were the uh, what endings were initiated okay and, and anywhere in between um, Capricorn because in terms of true sidereal astrology, which is what I practice here on, in, on Divine Conversations, um, and personally in my own practice, not just for the channel, but for my own personal practices, this is what I align with, true sidereal astrology. Y'all know this, for those of you who are new. Um, in true sidereal astrology, Saturn is about to move into, from Capricorn into Aquarius. Um, and that is uh, happening in February of 2023 okay Cap uh, Ca Saturn moving from Capricorn into Aquarius now this Saturn move shift from Capricorn to Aquarius is a big change for the collective we are entering into um, more of an Aquarian energy when it comes to Saturn's influence here so what I'm seeing for the collective at this point is um, going from 
Capricorn representing really rigid structures to Aquarius being more light and free. Like I'm literally seeing as we shift this energy, one, what was once really solid and restricting, uh, firm, I want to say restricting and controlling though, what once was is now poof, expanding. And it's going to be weird for a while. And it's probably going to be painful. It probably already is painful. You're recognizing this. It's, you're recognizing this. It's slowly stepping in. For some of us in the collective here, I see the Aquarian energy coming, kind of creeping towards us. And you're kind of like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Like some, or at least somebody is, okay? <laughs> there, there is real fear that is being generated as this Aquarian energy is approaching us. And what does that mean, this Aquarian energy approaching us? And why would it be creating fear? Well, there are certain in individuals, energies, entities, institutions, beings, whatnot, whatever you could say, that have been over manipulating the population and have been using excessive force and have been over controlling and have been getting power hungry and, and all this twisted, corrupted, icky stuff, right? Well, as Aquarius approaches, like I said, it, it's going from something really solid and rigid to, to something that's now all of a sudden expanding and there's air in it and, it, and, 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 and there's more to it and it's flowier and it's more uh, detached and it's uh, and Aquarius brings a level is, is actually bringing a level of justice in for those individuals who have been you over who have been manipulating and who have been um, abusing the energies of power and and all this right instruction oh my god <laughs> as i'm talking through all of this you guys some of you some of you here must have noticed what this card was at the bottom of the deck because all, as i was channeling that all of a sudden i heard someone say hey eric look at the bottom of the deck new moon in aquarius Bring love into the situation. Now, I was shuffling the tarot deck. Did I shuffle this yet? I don't think I did because this was at the bottom of the deck before. This is this stayed at the bottom of the... Wait, hold on. I don't remember if I shuffled this. It doesn't matter. It's here. And this was the card that came out to indic indicate the Aquarian energy in the Earth sign reading when we were talking about... When we initially started in this session, started talking about Saturn moving into Aquarius. I don't think I shuffled this deck yet. Anyway... Where was I? I totally forgot where I was. Um, what was I saying? Uh, so, oh, so with this Aquarian energy approaching, there is a level of justice, karmic justice. And also, uh, so, so that's where the fear is coming from, guys. Sorry, I'm all over the place. Right? It's, I have trouble work, working with air energy sometimes because it is literally like... <laughs> and I can follow it. It's just like I can't keep up here. <laughs> okay. Um, so, ah, okay. So next, for the air signs, the other thing that I'm picking up on here, and again, this could be uh, personally or this could be uh, applied to the, greater, the energy of the greater collective, but there's a song that's coming through here. It's again, another Tov Lo song in Swedish. It's Tu Vindu, but um, there's another a Tov Lo song. It's called A Suburbia. And these are, and this is, off the same album from the songs that I mentioned in the Earth Sign reading, the one song that I mentioned, um, Grapefruit, that was about body dysmorphia and, 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 and the like. Um, now this song, uh, uh, Suburbia, off this same album, which is called Dirt Femme, it's great, I love it, I love her, uh, but, but <clears throat> Suburbia is talking about, ultimately the hook, the last line of the hook is, I, I can't be no Stepford wife. Like no fake friends, no fake grass, none of that stuff. Like none of those, none of that bullshit. Like I don't, like that's not me. That's not who I am. If I'm gonna have a relationship with you or with somebody, I am not gonna be no step for wife. Like I'm not playing into that suburban energy. And so in terms of relationships, this could be something that you're exploring right now or at the very least, well, let me say it this way. This could be something you're going through right now or at the very least exploring, okay? Um, for for others of us in the greater collective, this is representing a level of people starting to back away from or release a lot of the old rigid structures and institutions that have been the, um, 
basis, I guess, of our society or the, um, the foundation, the standard, there we go, the standard of our society. A lot of us are starting to back away from that. And if you're not, or if we're not uh, fully releasing these things, we're at least starting to question them in ways that we never have before. But that's where, it, therein lies the, I wanna say, quote, danger, because in the ways that you're questioning this now, it could potentially lead to you releasing it ultimately in the future, okay? Not saying that you are doing it now, but you're at least in the moment where you are legit third party objectively a questioning it and that is where that Aquarius energy is coming in coming in too because in terms of the tarot what I'm seeing now is the king of swords objectivity and what are the facts here just the facts ma'am right whereas before you may not have been looking at it that way you may have been very biased or you may have you may still be biased but in the past you may have been allowing that bias to influence you and now you're not Aquarius is helping you do that. Saturn moving into Aquarius is helping you to do that. And that makes sense uh, because naturally it feels like with Saturn represents this structural type of energy, this controlling, ruling dominance or, um, um, yeah, structured hierarchical, you can say, but in, you know what I mean? In terms of like in a balanced way, ultimately in a good, as in as good a way as, as it could be, that's what Saturn represents in our lives, the structure, the institution, what, what, what holds society together, what keeps society together, what allows society to function together because it's held together. You know, that's, that's Saturn. That's the structure of it, right? That's Saturn and Capricorn. Saturn and Aquarius takes that, that, that physical structure, that physical energy and expands on it and makes it better and improves and it revolutionizes and takes more individuals and their needs uh, in, and, and even desires into account and works that into the situation, right? It expands, it gets bigger. So it makes perfect sense now with Saturn representing this structural type of energy in our lives, moving from a really rigid energy to a more free energy, literally going from earth to air. That's not an easy transition. And that affects all, and, that, and I, what I'm picking up on here, what I'm really trying to say is that is influencing a, a lot more people, is allowing a lot more people to be influenced by greater understanding, higher awareness, uh, compassion even. You know, Aquarius is the sign of the nurturer, really. Um, the, the, uh, she's pouring out water for, into the ocean for all, for the collective. Right. So there's compassion there. So that's allowing us some people who were never able to do this before or had a really hard time accessing this level of compassion. Now it's going to be much easier for the next two years, I believe, too, because I believe it, Saturn's transit through Aquarius in terms of true sidereal astrology, at least, is over the next two years. Think about the change, the revolution, the change in perspective, the higher awareness people could could gain. And this is also some of where the fear is could be coming from, because I mean, the, the the way people the ways in which people's minds can change can really change their lives but that's going to be really destructive for a while or at first initially because the old needs to come down so that the new can grow Gee, i hope you guys are following me here <laughs> This is what I'm feeling in the air signs, but this is really collectively what I'm feeling. There is some sort of reckoning coming with this Aquarian energy. With this Aquarian age is actually what I'm hearing. Because also remember, we're moving into, we already, we're already in, I don't know, the age of Aquarius, right? I kind of want to say in some cases, this is where it starts. <laughs> Ooh, all right. Two more shuffles then and we're gonna get into the overall the cards of the collective message yeah for the air signs and also for the greater collective here what's going on air message first card Ooh, new moon in libra a new romantic cycle begins this is could be very well could be uh personally but what i'm the dominant thing i'm feeling here is this is collectively there um oof. I'm seeing people relating to each other in brand new ways. I'm hearing the doors are being 
blown wide open and people are starting to understand each other. Like, yes, a new romantic cycle begins. So this definitely could be within your romantic life. But I'm seeing this romance here, greater collective, in terms of being compassion for each other, friendship, trying to understand each other, trying to get to know each other, trying to see your perspective or point of view, trying to relate each other, relate to each other, being friends. That is a type of romance, don't you think? Or at least it could be. Air signs. New moon in Leo. Confidence is your key to success. Look at all this new moon energy, you guys. All new moons came out for the earth signs. I don't remember what, what happened for water and fire, but well, there was a lot of, there was, a, there's a lot of new moon energy going on here. Air signs. Let me get one more card, please. Air signs. Collective message. Whoop. There it is right there. Blue moon. Believe in the impossible. Five, five, five on the counter as I say that. Look at this, you guys. Overall energy here. Oh, Gemini is showing up. The answers you need are coming. Full moon in Gemini. Okay. Okay. So with, uh, with all of this seriousness we were talking about in the beginning of the session here, with, you know, the looming doom and gloom of Aquarius in coming <laughs> in some cases, I, I want, what, what we really want you to understand here, guys, is that Everything, number one, is going to be okay. It's only a reckoning because things are trying to balance out. And you got to reap what you sow. I mean, if you put it out there, hey, look, it's going to come back to you. And if you're saying to us, well, we didn't know this. I didn't know it was going to come back to me like this. Well, now you do. Don't do it again. It's really all we can say. We'll help you clean up the mess. Don't worry about that. It's fine. Everything is okay. You're not being judged here the way you think you are. All right? Let us help you clean it up. But you got to do it. You got to do the work. You got to roll with the punches, I'm hearing. Let this all balance out. Confidence is the key to your success. Be confident. Show you are aware of the challenges at hand. You're aware of what you're trying to fix, how you're fixing it. You're conscious about this. Show that you're confident that it can be fixed, that you can come out on the other side and build up stronger now that you have the wisdom of what you, of what you just learned or went through. You have to believe in the impossible. The answers you desire are coming. The answers that you need are coming. Okay? Confidence is your key to success here. Leo. So definitely check out that fire sign energy. Maybe, ooh, oh guys, you definitely want to watch. If you're, in, if you're, if you're resonating with this in this way, um, maybe you already have watched the fire because I did them first. But you really might want to watch the fire sign reading if you're, if you're, if you're resonating with this on a collective scale, because the Leo reading in the fire signs was all about evading and preventing corruption. Yikes. Woo wee. All right, let's break this down. We're going to start with Gemini. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Hello, Gemini. Oh. That's probably going to be shocking. Um, <laughs> don't mind me. Let's see. Gemini. I want to say, oh, first of all, hi, welcome. If you've just skipped to just Gemini here and uh, just hit the timestamp to and haven't seen the collective session, I highly recommend you check that out, especially if this resonates for you okay also there's going to be a lot that i'm referring to in the collective reading that you're not going to be aware of and that you're going to miss so you might want to watch the collective reading first anyway i feel like you're excited i feel like you're excited about this and by this i mean what we started with in the collective session two more shuffles here oops what's going on for gemini 
post January 2023. Confident. Okay, so I'm focused on this confidence here for you, Gemini. I feel like you are confident. Maybe you know you need to be confident. Boom, bam, bow. You're starting with the King of Swords, Gemini. Yes, I like that. Aquarius. Okay. Didn't want to come out. The Three of Wands. Okay, so Gemini. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I see why you're excited because uh, y some of you actually have a real good project you're working on. Um, you're very focused on your future. I'm also picking up that, Gemini, you're very focused on your routine right now. Building a routine, keeping up with something, developing something, creating something. I I'm, I'm looking at the Three of Wands and I'm feeling like you're crafting something or I feel like you're preparing for something diligently and you're watching out for... Uh-huh. You're, you're, you're watching out for the opportunity. So what you're doing here, Gemini, is watching, is setting yourself up for success right now. Or at least that's the energy that you're in. Gemini. Ace of swords. The answer is yes. Okay. To that. Yes. Okay, cool. But also, you, the, uh, the other reason why the answer is yes, Gemini, is because you are very, uh, you know what it is you want, how it is you want to proceed. I also kind of feel like I want to say you you know how you want things to go. That doesn't mean that you're married to any sort of outcome in particular, but you really want to, you, you, you know what, you, you, mm, you know what it is you want, you see it very clearly. Or, you, or you know what it is you want and you're using this Ace of Swords to cut anything away that does not match that vision. There it is. Yep, that's right. Actually, let's do it this way. Yeah. I like this, Gemini. Overall energy at the bottom of the deck. Aha! That is very interesting. Because when I was going to say, when I was talking about this King of Swords here, I was going to say, in terms of you not being married to anything, what I was feeling was a King of Pentacles type of energy of just like being so set and solid. You know what I mean? Uh, which could potentially be dangerous, which could be a danger here because it, this is not set in stone yet. It's still being developed. It's still, it, it may still be a theory, uh, a dream, a desired outcome, a mental construct right now that you're working on building and bringing into the physical. And I, I, I specifically saw, when I was making that comparison, I specifically saw the King of Pentacles. Bam. So there is a King of Pentacles element here. Um, and I f uh, what I want to say about this is ultimately you're bringing this King of Pentacles into development. All right, but I still feel like this King of Pentacles energy is a physical representation of you in this situation, Gemini. And that's in your, your sense of steadfastness and actually being committed to the idea. Aha, yes. Okay. Okay. Good. Good, 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 Gemini. This is very good. Last thing you want to say to Gemini here? Nine of Swords. Okay. Don't let fear get you down. Nine of Cups. Ooh. Ooh, Gemini. Ooh. <laughs> Two of Pentacles. That's... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Whoa. Holy shit. Okay. Um, hot and cold, I want to say. Hot and cold. Hot and cold. But um, balancing nine of swords, nine of cups, two of pentacles. So some of you are going through a divorce type of energy. Somebody here. In some way. I, I, I'm, I'm getting, I'm feeling a sense of really like whoo, picking yourself up <laughs> out of something and moving on nine of pentacles the hierophant the moon the five of cups this is a very deliberate I i'm making my own stance i'm taking my own stance i'm making my own way i know my own way 
I, and quite frankly, even though I'm sad about this, I know I have to do it. I know I have to do it here. So what I'm looking at is the individual that is saying this, Gemini, is this Nine of Pentacles energy, right? In, 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 and what they're showing is the Hierophant, rules and regulations. And often what I, what I um, um, institute uh, or, or attribute, excuse me, these two cards together with is personal sense of um, rules and regulations, boundaries for the self. Your, if you were, if you were to consider yourself a corporation or um, an institution, what would your, what would be your operating guidelines, right? I hope that's making sense. This is what you're showing to the outside world that is illusional. Individuals that are treating you poorly, individuals that are shady with you, individuals that are taking advantage of you, situations that are taking advantage of you. This is a level of pers holding personal integrity in terms of, in, in, in the face of that which is shady, we could say. And so, f and, and, and so from, it's from here that I feel this individual kind of just like, <clears throat> really like working to finally pick themselves up and move on from something. Five of Cups at the bottom of the deck. Aha, yep, is the Page of Wands. Personal transformation. Yeah, Gemini, yeah, yeah. So now for you, this new romantic cycle feels like self-love. A new romantic cycle with self. Maybe you're dating yourself, um, loving yourself new and in new and better ways differently. Yeah, that's good, Gemini. I like this for you. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. We are going to move on to Libra. Libra, Libra, Libra. Libra, Libra, Libra. Libra, Libra. Libra, Libra, Libra. <laughs> Okie dokie. Hi, Libra. Okay, um, <laughs> so Libra, the apocalypse is happening. Uh-huh, yep, I know, shh, 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 it's okay. It's fine, everything's gonna be fine. Um, we're, we're gonna make it through this. See, li the reason why I'm saying this, Libra, is because as I'm tapping into your energy, I'm literally seeing this, and to be, and, and let me reassure you, Spirit is showing this to me in a comical way, okay? <laughs> But there may be some serious, seriousness to it, some real seriousness to it. But I'm seeing you standing in the apocalypse. Doom and gloom, death and destruction all around. People are running all around like everything is going crazy. And you're just standing there like, this is okay. This is good. No, no, it's good, actually. It's good. We're going to make it through this, guys. We're going to make it through. It's, it's peaceful energy. I don't know where that part came from. The peacefulness? I don't know. That was the first image <laughs> that came to me. And I'm going to be honest with you, it's pretty comical. I don't know why. Maybe that's just somebody's... Maybe That's going to that's gonna re resonate with somebody. <laughs> um, okay, okay. So when I zoom out and, look, and I look at the bigger picture here, at this point, it's kind of comical. Like... Uh, uh, and maybe this is where Libra is going a little bit cynical because, because also part of this Libra is not, it's not that you're saying this in a delusional way. You're not delusional. You're, oh, no, 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 on the contrary. You're not delusional at all. You are seeing exactly what is happening and you know exactly why it's happened. So uh, in term, on your behalf, in terms of you, it's like, yeah. Yeah, I saw this coming. What, didn't you? What, what do you expect me to do now? So that's why you're just kind of, in, in, in amidst all this death, uh, well, doom and gloom and destruction, really, you're just kind of standing there like laughing it off. <laughs> yeah. Why? Because it needed to happen in order for things to get better, to improve. You see this clearly. That's why this is funny. Or at least it can be. I don't know. Something about calling this funny doesn't feel right, so I'm not going to do that anymore. Because really, it's not funny. 
it didn't have to get to this point. And you know that. Some of you are, are, are on either side of this. Two more shuffles. That's one. All of a sudden, this got very, very serious. This is two. Holy shit. It's not funny at all. It's not funny at all. And I apologize if I offended anybody by saying that. Because this is not funny. Temperance in reverse. Page of Swords. Ten of Wands. Knight of Pentacles. Let's talk about this, because really, it's it's just it, it's lightening up now. Spirit light light is this just this got very dark for a moment, but light's coming back in, and spirit is saying this is really just the nature of an imbalance that you are learning expressly. I guess we can say temperance in reverse. Page of Swords though is a good sign here, Libra, because either you or this person, somebody here is getting it is seeing the Ten of Wands, is seeing the, 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 the strife, the overburden, the necessary need for change. Yes, necessary need for change. We want to reiterate the necessity here. <laughs> but I wanna, okay, I wanna look at the Page of Swords. <sighs> Two of Cups. It's off the table. Page of Pentacles. The offer is off the table in a physical sense. It has been thrown away. It has been left out. Jeez. The four of wands, Libra. Is, uh, that's a home. That's a family. That's a... Oh, something great was lost here. I'm hearing dominance, overpowering the situation. Nine of cups. Either somebody's comfort zone or somebody's selfishness. The offer is off the table. Page of pentacles to the four of wands were thrown out, were, came out and were thrown. And with that, comes the world. This is the end of the cycle, a cycle. And what I feel like dominantly here, Libra, is this is an end of a cycle of a desire for some sort of, some certain type of relationship that it's either a certain relationship or a, 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 a relationship dynamic that could play out with anybody and probably has been playing out with many people that is now finally coming to a close and or being released. The, the last card in this is the world. A cycle is over. A cycle has been completed. I feel like someone is finally letting something go. A desire specifically to to start over to change to start again not in this way what i'm and, and with the overall energy what i get with the nine of wands here is you've got to or this person has got to get over some sort of selfishness nine of cups to the lovers to the to the three of cups yes and what i want to say here is yeah, you do have the right to free will, the lovers. And you are perfectly well and good to choose whatever this Nine of Cups is. Yeah. But what I hear with that is then you got to deal with the, the circumstances. It's like you can't, what I want to say is you can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't have it both ways. Is what you're saying to this person in, is that that's the dominant feeling here. You have to give a little. But, but therein is, that's where, see, that's where the argument is. Uh-huh, that's, uh-huh, uh, -huh, uh -huh. Mm. Ace of Swords, Five of Wands, Page of Cups. The Page of Cups here represents some need for compassion. Some need for understanding, some need to like, to give, a, to like, give in a little bit here. Somehow, 
maybe someone is like really digging their heels in about that but i just i, I get this feeling that the page of cups represents a need for To concede a little bit this is what I'm, is what I want to say. That's the, that's the term here, and and there's a need for self reflection. I feel like someone is really being selfish. Oof, oof, oof. Oh God, bless Libra. <laughs> Holy shit, look at this. The Hermit, the King of Pentacles, the Justice card, the Eight of Swords, and Death. This person or you, excuse me, guys, whomever is needing to concede a bit, kind of needs to look in the mirror. I want to say. And, and figure out where it is they're being so selfish. And also, it, it's like you, you get what you deserve. This is, and see, this is where we come back to how this started out funny and then it got very not funny. Because it's like, justice, you should have known. If this was, the, if the, look in the mirror, okay? Look in the mirror, hermit. King of Pentacles, if this is the stance you're going to hold and you are well within your right to choose to do so, okay, no, and it, it, then this is what you're going to get. Justice to the Eight of Swords. You're going to be trapped somehow. Or that this is going to be, the, there, it's, there's going to be no two ways about it. There's no way out of this other than to change the stance. Death. So, on the brighter side of this, someone is either starting to see or is about to see just how this, this situation perpetuated itself and thus they will be free. Mm, the fool, the chariot, the queen of swords, the wheel of fortune. There ain't no two ways about it. If you want it to change, ace of pentacles, you gotta give a little. <laughs> Good. <sighs> the cycle. The world the cycle is over or at least it can be it can be libra it can be or person cross watcher i don't know okay there you have it libra i'm gonna leave it there thank you so much for tuning in i hope this was helpful for you Okay. Here comes that song again, because we're about to get into Aquarius. All right, so, oh boy. All right, Aquarius is next. Here comes, here it comes. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Whew. I need to prepare for this. <laughs> All right, here we go. Hi, Aquarius. Oh. I'm still trying to... This song came back. This song, um, Suburbia by Tove Lo. So, okay, this is dominantly an Aquarian message. Something about suburbia, something about traditional. This could be a traditional marriage type of situation, a traditional marriage type of circumstance that could very well be blossoming into something new, but that is going to be a challenge. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Uh, but this is also dominantly the collective message of wanting freedom or wanting a greater level of freedom or having an under a greater understanding of freedom. You know, I want to make a shout out to Lada Ducheva. I don't talk about... I don't talk about many other astrologers here. I don't like to mix the messages of um, true sidereal astrology and, and Western or traditional tropical astrology because I personally have not found a way to, to balance that and make it cohesive. Lada, how, uh, however, has done an excellent job and she is someone that I've followed for a very long time. Um, and I, re I, I love her. I think she's wonderful and beautiful, but I also, I like the way she explains things and she, I just, I can, I connect and resonate with her a lot. And I want to give her a shout out because she released a, a video recently, um, 
I'll try and remember to uh, post it. Uh, it uh, Lara Ducheva, she's, um, I don't know where she's from, but L-A-D-A, Lara uh, D-U-C-H-E-V-A, I believe is how you, I don't know, and please, and if I, I didn't do that, if I butchered that, I'm so sorry, but <laughs> um, she's an astrologer. She released a video talking about the ages, um, talking about the, the, like the millennials, the, the baby boomers, those generations, I'm sorry, the generations of our time period and the, pro the progression of humanity through them and what each uh, generation brings and represents. Her generation specifically is Libra. This is when Pluto, and she was talking in terms of Pluto's transit. So where was Pluto when these, eight, when these generations were born? Um, <laughs> I'm a millennial true millennial and see I, the reason why I, I i say this is because this is from traditional astrology right this is not true sidereal but i'm shouting her out here because i really resonated with this because i am a fucking millennial and if you if you watch that video and you watch the millennial part you'll see it but um the age of, of when when pluto was in libra was a time period, according to her research, was a time period in which this generation started to explore, this is where we got social media, this is where we started to explore um, the relationships with other people, okay? We've come out of uh, the more interpersonal and now we've moved into the seventh house of Libra where now you're really starting to uh, communicate with the other, you're starting to think about other, you're starting to try and want to balance with other at this point, right? So that generation started this energy, started this look into the study into society and interpersonal connections and trying to heal things you really I really want you guys to if you're resonating with this I really want you to watch this video from her I'm going to try and remember and post it in the description box um, because you'll understand when you watch it it's a long video it's like two hours long but it, but you can jump around and, and she has timestamps. stamps um, but the reason why I'm saying this is because there is a big influence here in terms of this in terms of this Libra energy. And I know we're talking about Aquarius, but Aquarius, it, it, it's, not, it's like now we're starting to bring the understanding that we've developed in this experiment in, or, or in the research so socially that we've been doing since, the, uh, since Pluto was in Libra and blah, blah, blah. And this generation was born and all these things transpired in society. And now with eight Aquarius approaching us in such a strong way, what we've learned is now being put into practical application. And so that's why this song of suburbia and the structure, the restriction, the fakeness, the falsehood, the corruption, the, the control, the dominance, the, 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 into, the, the, um, the codependence within all of that. It's being addressed now, but it's, we're being moved forward. It's being changed. Change is being initiated in terms of that. So again, you could be connecting with that in a personal way in terms of in your personal romantic relationships, you're experiencing that or exploring it, or in the greater collective scheme, you're starting to maybe want to divorce yourself from a lot of what society has, what you've married into with society. Societal structure, institutional structure. Saturn moving into Aquarius. All right, Aquarius energy, three shuffles here. One, two, for Aquarius. Three, all right, Aquarius. Hmm. The Six of Cups. Oh, wow. <laughs> and if, it, it, okay, now this didn't land on the table, but it also didn't land on the floor. It landed on my lap. Okay. It did land face down, but also it landed on my lap. And it's the past. Past circumstances. Nostalgia. You might be, re in this energy, you might be really nostalgic. I know I'm really nostalgic right now. And I'm nostalgic right now in ways of nurturing my inner child. So that means doing a lot of things like when I have my days off or when I have free time, like connecting with my inner child and um, watching cartoons. My big thing lately has been watching cartoons from the 90s, like SNCC um, and like Saturday morning lineups with like the real like time uh, related commercials, like the, the real period, blah, blah, blah. When, oh, okay, so you might be really nostalgic right now, but the reason why this Six of Cups fell out 
and didn't fall on the table, but instead fell on my lap was, it's time to let this go. And there is either you know this or there's a collective awareness surrounding this, Aquarius. The King of Cups. Oh, yes. I like that. I like that because that is a sign of emotional maturity and emotional fortitude. I like that. If it's not, if you're not necessarily proficient in this King of Cups energy, this emotional maturity and fortitude, there is a great deal of influence there towards you, or you may really be striving for it. You may be really working on it. You may be really stepping up in this way now, and, it, and this is maybe in a very new way for you. Maybe a little bit easier for you now. You have the fortitude, the willpower, the understanding, the trust in the universe. And then finally, to do it, to stand up in this way. Okay, and then you have the Queen of Pentacles. The Queen of Pentacles. Wow. Okay, overall energy. Bam, the King of Swords. There you are, Aquarius. Queen of Pentacles, though. So here's the thing about this, you guys, and that's also, I, I also, I'm going to try and remember to put this song in there and I'll try and remember go back to go back and do it in the earth sign reading too, because I didn't do it in the earth sign reading. But part of the message of this song is like, at least what I get from it is that it's not like, because what she's also saying in the song is we have, this is our relationship. This is why our relationship works even is how you could translate it. So it's not like there is a lack of commitment here or it's not like there's a lack of wanting to be in a relationship and it's not like there's a lack of desiring to show up for a circumstance. But it has to be the right one. The one that fits, the one that is balanced. And that doesn't mean that it's fit, it fits and is balanced for everybody. This is not a one-size-fits-all type of situation. It never has been. But each individual has the potential for a match. Millions of potentials at this point, even, you could say, in, in, in some cases. In most cases, I don't know. I'm making general. I'm, I'm whatever. But look, that's what, that's, see, and that's why the Queen of Pentacles is also here with this King of Cups. And then the Six of Cups was... Is, is saying you're ready to let go of the circumstances that keep you away from having this. And you're ready to show up, Queen of Pentacles, for the right thing. But you're also having or exhibiting the enough emotional fortitude right now to say no when it's not right. Overall energy of the King of Swords. Now the two more cards wanted to come out here. They came out face down. I'm going to take them. Seven of Swords. Page of Wands. This may be happening in secret, this transformation. There definitely is a scorpionic death influence here because we have the King of Cups. King of Cups represents Scorpio. Some of you, what I'm picking up on here with this Seven of Swords, Page of Wands, what you need to know is, or what somebody needs to know is that, that an individual is having the emotional fortitude to go through this transformation in silence. They may not be let, really letting you in on what's going on within them. I feel like there's a reason for that. It may very well be that you or they have been trying to communicate and that's just not working, so no more. This feels like the silent treatment almost. Seven of Swords with the Page of Wands. Um, what this is making me think of, Aquarius or Collective, is of... Um, Almost ghosting people, but not for a lack of trying, you know, in some way, at least in this case. Really, at this point, there's really just nothing to say, but nothing at all. Stop engaging and go through this transformation on your own. Hold on. Let me get a little bit more on this. Seven of Swords, Page of Wands. Temperance. The balancing out. The alchemical transmutation. There may not be anything to say. It may be very necessary to go through this quietly. That's it. Okay. 
Okay, now we're, um, the spirit wants me to stop there. I just saw, I just heard it again. It's necessary to balance it. Okay. This feels like a... Please continue. Okay, I was saying, this feels like a weird way to stop. Uh, temperance. Eight of Pentacles. Uh-huh. Okay. This is necessary to heal this. Ace of Pentacles. Eight of Pentacles, Ace of Pentacles. But then this flew out. And fell on the floor. Five of Cups. There is an offer that needs to be made. Something is in development. Something is in development. Something is being worked on tangibly, physically. There's some sort of sorrow, deep fear, regret that needs to be released. I mean, it flew out and flew off. This one flew off on the, ta on the floor. And the feeling that I get from it is reject this, move on from it. Five of Cups is what it was with the Eight of Pentacles and the Ace of Pentacles. And then also at the bottom of the deck is the Ace of Wands. Something is coming, something is coming in to revolutionize the process or on a more personal level, some sort of change that someone is going through right now is about to be really seen fully in the way that they re-emerge from this process. So now, okay, the Seven of Swords to the Page of Wands feels like a butterfly in the cocoon that, quite frankly, is about to emerge. Energetically speaking, of course, this could be a few years in process, but, but that's the energy that I'm getting here. The, the, there is some sort of... Something is cocooned in a cocoon. Something is balancing alchemizing, coming together, working itself out, working its way to the surface. In terms of, you know how I like to have my garden analogies, this would be an energy of a seed was planted and now it's germinated and it's growing enough to ultimately breach the surface and reach the sun. Regre let go of regret, re let go of fear, re let go of shame, let go of guilt. There could be a way to work together. There could be a way to balance something. This could, between, be, this could be some sort of institutional, institutional energy. Maybe a marriage. But also, Aquarius, what I'm getting here is that someone or maybe a, a number of people are going through a very deep and necessary internal process and it need to be allowed to go through this. What I'm feeling is that there will be an emergence soon, later on. But right now, there is a deep healing process that needs to go underway. So if someone has ghosted you or you are in separation from someone or you have actually separated, what I'm feeling here is there is a very real energy, a need for parties to go to their either sides, their personal spaces, and collect themselves a little bit. This is something that I used to talk about a lot in the Twin Flame journey, when I talked about separation. So maybe that's how this resonates for you. But I'm getting here, this, this, the Libra, um, a new romantic cycle approaches. This could very well be you guys coming back together. <laughs> Someone might connect with that song somehow. This may be relevant. That's, a, that's why I didn't pause it this time because I've, something in me felt like, no, somebody needs to hear that. So if you speak Spanish or if you know that song and if you're resonating with that song, you want to find that song, you might want to check it out. But there is some sort of new romantic cycle happening here. It could very well be that you guys come back together later on or this transformational process brings you a whole new relationship. Ultimately, in this, actually, in, ter in terms of that branch, that, that feels like it starts with you 
having a different relationship with yourself. Specifically, I'm hearing reparenting yourself. And, or starting to date yourself or starting to date yourself again. I'm also hearing and starting to date yourself again. And I'm feeling, huh, I'm feeling a progression of working with your inner child and like growing up and becoming an adult and reworking the, the vision, the image of yourself and loving yourself more. And I'm feeling like you're scrubbing as you're, it's like you're scrubbing your whole timeline up until where you are now injecting greater amounts of self-love and care and compassion f for yourself which ultimately overflows and then surrounds and then flows out to your surrounding environment so that can only benefit the whole world <laughs> rebalancing okay Whew. i'm going to leave it there thank you guys so much for tuning in i hope this was helpful for you i'm sending you so much love Mwah. Bye. <laughs>